The Undertaker finally wants to retire, Randy Orton wants the Intercontinental Championship exclusive Triple H interview on the channel, not fake at all like he's sitting right here people, hi Triple H. Sasha Banks bashes WWE again, Vince McMahon wants the Attitude Era back. Hi my mom is the titties, <laughs> mom is the titties. <laughs> First John Moxley title victory after leaving the WWE, WWE 2K20 and Stomping Ground, all of that later in this episode of Greatness of wrestling but before that this is a leaked footage of every wwe creative idea it's just not exaggerated enough and by the way people these championships went missing if you know who are the champions let me know in the comments below because i totally forgot speaking of missing where are all these wwe wrestlers i feel like i feel like wwe forgot that they exist and we need to help the WWE. The wild card rule sure rules. I'm just I'm I'm just joking. It, it's I I love the wild card rule. It's great. Like I, I can see Roman on Raw and SmackDown. Are you angry at me? <laughs> Raw, SmackDown, Reigns on both. Oh my god, I love I love this rule. Good morning everybody. The ultimate farmer. <laughs> Little naive farm boy. Country style. Welcome back to another episode of Greatness of Wrestling. How are you guys doing today? We have so much to talk about. So why don't we just start with The Undertaker? So the Undertaker possibly had one of the worst matches of his career at WWE Super Showdown. The match itself was not bad, but we got so many botches that nearly ended these guys' careers. Or lives. Because Goldberg got concussed, the match ended with a terrible finish. And it's fair to say that The Undertaker was not happy with the match. I feel like this match was a terrible idea. Two men in their 80s, you should probably expect something like that. After the match, Goldberg actually collapsed again. I don't know how serious it is, but it's probably time to retire for both Goldberg and The Undertaker. WWE uploaded this picture on Instagram and they said first time ever. Kiss me! Kiss me, Taker! I'm dead, bruh. Just a little bit of comedy on the channel. <laughs> so one dude commented, can you please stop bringing The Undertaker back now? After everything he's done for the company, just let him retire in peace. Literally, the match was terrible because those two guys are in their 50s. They can't compete at the main event level anymore. You saw how The Undertaker was struggling to stand up after just 5 minutes and Goldberg was just too weak to even pull off a jackhammer. Just let them live out the rest of their days in peace or they will end up getting seriously hurt. So you can say that the guy was pretty harsh but The Undertaker actually liked the comment. So does that mean that The Undertaker actually agrees with the guy and he will finally retire? So The Undertaker liked the comment but uh, you know it, it's weird because you cannot really blame the WWE for using The Undertaker in Saudi. I mean people The Undertaker can make his own decisions. He took the money and now he likes a comment where a guy bashes the WWE for bringing back The Undertaker. You took the money, you continue to wrestle, nobody is telling you to, nobody is making that decision for you, The Undertaker. And I'm not necessarily someone who hates seeing The Undertaker in the WWE. I love The Undertaker, every time he returns I, 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 I mark out, honestly. But uh, you cannot really blame the WWE, it's your decision, you took the millions, uh, well... That's what you got. What makes me angry the most is that WWE teased uh, Undertaker's retirement so many times and it never actually happened. WrestleMania 28, WrestleMania 33, and now The Undertaker is ruining his legacy by participating in these kind of matches. WrestleMania 33 should have been the last Undertaker's match. <laughs> Randy Orton wants the Intercontinental Championship. So WWE posted this image by saying, Wusha challenge Aleister Black. Randy Orton tagged himself, and then he tagged Finn Balor saying, and Finn Balor for that matter, first title I ever won is around his waist. Maybe I want it back. Yes, please. 
Randy Orton's first WWE Championship is the Intercontinental Championship, the previous version. So if Randy Orton would actually win the Intercontinental Championship against one of the most boring champions in the world, Finn Balor, would he bring back the design as well? Personally, I don't know if I would love to see that. I love both of these designs, but I gotta admit the white version actually makes the championship look a little bit more prestigious. So I don't necessarily care which championship Randy Orton is going to win or bring back or whatever. I love, I would love to see Randy Orton as the Intercontinental Champion in the WWE in 2019. If anyone could bring back the prestige to this championship, well, it's Randy Orton. Welcome back to the channel and today we have Triple H. And the first thing I want to say is that, are we cool because I've made fun of the WWE a lot lately. You know I asked for this interview, right? I personally asked for you to do this interview. You are the voice of the WWE. I love what you do. I have no problem with anything you have said. So you are okay with me talking crap about the WWE? That is your job. Okay, but to be fair, I even said that WWE is just garbage. That's great. It's why I asked you to do this interview. If that is the impression of me right now, I want to get that out in the open. I want to clear the air because that is not me. Oh, okay. I, I guess you, you, you kind of... You kind of agree. So you ask whatever question it is you want to ask. There is no, you should have zero fear of repercussion. No repercussions. Zero. So I can feel safe during this interview. What's the worst thing that could happen to me? Broken jaw, wired shut, concussion. Was that a joke? No. Well, that was your interview. Uh, thank you for your time. Next week, do your homework, come with some real questions. So this interview was a little bit too short, I know, but Triple H was just intimidated by my muscles and, uh, you know, it's not my fault. <laughs> Sasha Banks bashing the WWE again. So basically, Here's what happened. You all know that Sasha Banks wants to leave the WWE. She's not happy. She refuses to work on Monday Night Raw. Basically, she's being unprofessional. Whether you agree with that or not, it doesn't matter. Sasha Banks has a poor relationship with the WWE, in my opinion. This time, Sasha Banks liked a tweet of a fan talking crap about the WWE. First of all, why would you say anything negative about the WWE? We have the wild card rule and the wild card rule. With every passing Raw and SmackDown, I grow less and less interested in the product. I'm starting to realize that I'm supporting a crappy company for its past greatness rather than critiquing its current BS. I can't even sit through Raw or SmackDown anymore. First of all, I completely agree 100%. Uh, WWE never been this bad. It was bad before, but ever since WWE brought this uh, wild card rule, it became unwatchable in my opinion. So, Sasha Banks actually liked that tweet. And the thing is, like I've said, I understand, and I know that Sasha Banks has her reasons to leave the WWE, she's probably unhappy, and she's probably very reasonable with that. I just don't understand what she's trying to accomplish. Her liking that tweet will get her in more trouble. I know Sasha Banks has an ego problem, but if you really want to leave the WWE as soon as possible, just finish your contract and then leave for AEW. <laughs> Vince McMahon wants the Attitude Era back, or should I say, he feels like he wants the Attitude Era back. You see people, we don't need the Attitude Era back. We really don't. Uh, we need good writing, good promos, good segments, good matches. L it's really unnecessarily. My, in my opinion, Ruthless Aggression Era was the best era in the WWE, but that's based on your preference. The reason the Attitude Era was so great was not because of the non-PG stuff. It was good because we had The Rock, we had Stone Cold Steve Austin, we had characters. So that's what people don't really understand. Anyway, so Vince McMahon already kinda brought back the Attitude Era because apparently the third hour is the Attitude Era. Yes, so 
Maybe you didn't notice that, but I feel like we got a chair shot, like, once, probably. And uh, it went dark. The lighting changes. And that's apparently an Attitude Era touch on the product. It feels a little bit less PG because there's no light. That's a reason to watch the WWE. I was like, you know what, this, this show is terrible. Terrible writing, horrible matches. I don't care. Whoa, 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 whoa. I cannot see the crowd anymore. I better watch. Hmm, this piqued my interest. You know, uh, Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin... Not, not, not for me, I thought it was boring, but with a different lighting, mmm. I'm not even joking, apparently that's the reason why we got this lighting. WWE felt like bringing back the Attitude Era in a way, and that's possibly the reason why we have this 24-7 championship. So, this idea, in my opinion, was successful. I love the idea of 24-7 championship. Uh, it's entertaining, and quite honestly, the only entertaining thing about the WWE right now. It's weird, it's a jobber thing, but somehow it's the most entertaining thing in the WWE. The only way WWE will get better is if they actually hit the reset button and bring back the brand split, uh, change up the rivalries, everything needs to change in the WWE. <laughs> John Moxley won the New Japan Pro Wrestling United States Championship. He defeated Juice Robinson at New Japan Pro Wrestling's Best of Super Juniors Tournament. It was a pretty good match. Dean Ambrose completely changed his look. He looks great. My favorite thing was the fact that he also changed his finisher a little bit. That looked pretty nasty. And you know, just by watching the match, you can feel like Dean Ambrose really loves being a wrestler right now. And that's the best thing that could happen to the guy. He's passionate about professional wrestling and now he can express his creativity. So he's your IWGP. United States champion, but don't worry, that doesn't mean that he's not gonna join AEW. He already signed a three-year deal with AEW, but since AEW is not on TNT yet, they allow Dean Ambrose to be on New Japan Pro Wrestling. Same for Jericho, so it's not a big deal. He will probably lose that he will probably lose that championship pretty soon. <laughs> WWE 2K20 will get a huge trailer. The upcoming promotion for this year's WWE 2K game will be tremendous, similar to the NFL 100 commercial from the Super Bowl. The spot features legends and current superstars including Stone Cold Steve Austin, Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan. Mega money spent on this. It will look awesome. Following on the WWE 2K spot news from yesterday, sources state Ric Flair was initially scheduled for the shoot but now not confirmed. Others who are confirmed for the commercial include Roman Reigns, Sting, Paul Heyman, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch. So the commercial will be huge. Now I really don't care. I really don't care. You can have the best commercial in the world. You can bring back every WWE superstar back including Ultimate Warrior and Yakazuna. It, it won't matter. If we are not getting gameplay. I really don't care. The trailer will change nothing, but I hope that at least we will get some information now. At least a cover superstar. Okay, you don't necessarily need gameplay, but if you would hint at maybe, you know, during a trailer you have a former general manager or someone like that, basically teasing that there's going to be a GM mode in WWE 2K20, then I would be fine. If you are going to do someone like uh, Charlotte Flair's 2K Showcase mode, Tease that as well. Other than that, I don't really care. <laughs> and finally, the pay-per-view of rematches with the worst logo I've ever seen in my entire life. Please stop. Anyway, so these are the matches. Are you excited, guys? Because we are getting Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Is that a Monday night? No, it's not Monday Night Raw. It's WWE Stomping Ground with the worst logo I've ever seen. Yeah, who cares, honestly, at this point. But don't you worry, we are getting Bayley versus Alexa Bliss. SmackDown versus Raw for the SmackDown Women's Championship, yeah. But don't you worry, we are getting Becky Lynch versus Lacey Evans again. Thank you. But don't you worry, we are getting Kofi Kingston vs Dolph Ziggler for the WWE Championship in a steel cage match. The only interesting match in my opinion, but very unpredictable. Dolph Ziggler is definitely going to win the WWE Championship. This is sarcastic by the way, when I'm doing that, I'm being sarcastic. Baron Corbin vs Seth Rollins.
Nobody gives a shit. Come on, you can do better than that. Seriously, WWE are struggling, but 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 they give us this. Seriously, anyone but Baron Corbin versus Seth Rollins would be way better, and this is possibly the main event of the show. Are you serious? I want to like the WWE, but they are not giving me a reason. I mean, at one point, WWE will realize that the wild card rule is killing the company, right? Right? <laughs> they will. They, they will, right? <laughs> uh, nope! Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below how do you feel about The Undertaker retiring, Randy Orton winning the Intercontinental Championship, Stomping Ground, WWE 2K20, and whatever we talked on this episode of Greatness of Wrestling. Thank you for watching. As always, yeah boy, the great one. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure. Good morning, everybody. Your people so soft and lazy. The ultimate farmer. <laughs> <laughs>